Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the new Desolation Squad from the new Strike Force Agastus and discuss how good they are on the tabletop, how to use them, which tactics I recommend, and which chapters will benefit from having these guys the most. Firstly, let's talk about their stats. Essentially, they are a primary devastator squad without the flexibility of multiple weapon choices. So we don't have Melta, we don't have Grav here, we only have missile launchers, but they have the primary firepower in those missile launchers, so they are much better than the regular ones. We are exchanging the versatility of the firstborn missile launcher where we can select either to, sh to fire a frag missile or a crack missile. These guys cannot do that. They have to select that before the battle uh, but instead you gain more firepower so we have a squad size of 5 to 10 models so a typical intercessor slash hellblaster style which i really like because uh, the reason why we have those three to six man squads is because gw are trying to limit the efficiency basically they are trying to limit the amount of oomph you're gonna get from a single squad uh, for example if we could uh, around blade guard as 10 man squads they would likely be especially at some point uh, not maybe now when the terminators are cheaper but before that when uh, terminator with a storm shield did cost 43 points it was it would probably be more efficient to run blade guard as a 10 man squad and they would do the, almost the same thing in a very very efficient manner especially with transhuman for two just two command points for a 10 man squad uh that's why we have these limitations and having uh full 10 man squad of anything primaris is always a breath of fresh air because again any abilities stratagems anything you use on them will give you a better return on your investment we have signum with the squad so the same as with the devastator squad we can give one of the models once per shooting phase two plus ballistic skill that's neat i guess it slows the game kind of because you have to slow roll one of the models even though it's the same shot usually um as all the others so that's why i don't really like this rule much but obviously it's a positive it's a benefit for the squad so we don't have cherubs here anymore so fat babies with wings are left at the home base to rest uh, so we are not firing any of these guns more than once in the shooting phase their shooting weapons are either super frag or super crack launchers something that we before that we only saw on the hammerfall bunker i think and maybe something else that i don't remember so it's 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 a primary name for the uh, missile types uh, which means that we're going to get D3 plus 3 shots at strength 4, AP 1, damage 1 on the super frag, and D1 shot at strength 8, AP 3, damage D3 plus 3 uh, on the super crack shot. Both are 48 inches of range, uh, like the old style missile launcher. And that 48 inches of range is one of the best things, I think, about the squad, because it gives you the ability to stay out of trouble out of uh, the range of your opponent's guns and still be efficient now about these two choices we have i honestly don't think that you will ever use the uh, super frag option unless we're talking about some very specific combo uh with some buffs and bonuses which probably there is some way to run them more or less efficiently but i would personally gravitate towards the one shot strength 8 ap3 d3 plus 3 damage because at the end of the day there are a bunch of things like aggressors for example if you want to have just a ton of low truck load of uh bolt or shots go ahead just grab a five or six man squad of aggressors and you will have just a, a bucket load of dice to uh, shoot at your opponent is that efficient i don't think so i've tried a uh, five-man aggressor squad with a five-man heavy intercessor squad with uh, the auto bolt rifles and i played against votan um not so long ago and to be honest that squad didn't do much for me uh because they were just I, I i was grabbing a whole bunch of dice and at the end my opponent was rolling just like a couple of saves because uh those shots are not very very good they uh, have problem with hitting they have problem with wounding stuff especially if it's not toughness three uh if it's toughness five it's it's a very big problem or higher 
and uh, you have a lot of stuff nowadays which is toughness four or five or higher that you need to do, be dealing with and you don't want to run a very huge uh, expensive squad like in this case these guys cost 35 points a model so a squad of 10 would cost you 350 and 350 points is a lot of points for something that is not going to reliably kill uh, something that you need to be dealing with and the ap3 strength ad3 plus 3 damage is very reliable that's what i really like about them they are core so you will be getting those rerolls the only d drawback is that both types are heavy so you will be suffering that minus one for moving and shooting unless you play a, a chapter where you can ignore that in some way shape or form but usually you will be suffering minus one so hitting on four so you need to um, have those rerolls if you have access to a chapter master they are a perfect squad to grant that reroll all hits too because um, then you will probably hit with seven or eight shots after all the rerolls and uh, that's that's quite good because it will be relatively easy for you to wound and it's high AP high damage shots so they are a threat for almost anything that you really want to kill uh, Votan bikers uh, knights um, land raiders or any uh, vehicle of that type like the land fortress with Votan a lot of stuff a lot of heavy stuff that you need to be dealing with and space mates don't actually have shooting like that available readily available it's not like we, ha we can run bright lenses in every squad uh, and that's why desolation squad is a good thing to have especially for some chapters as we'll see later no matter which option you go for you will still be getting uh, additional d3 shots for each guy at uh, strength 4 ap1 damage 1 which can ignore line of sight which is a nice bonus even though you will be suffering uh, minus one to hit which you probably already suffered so it's still force but you will be suffering also minus one to the ab uh so uh, your ap1 will be mute in this case in any case it's a good thing to have extra anti-infantry shots that you don't pay extra for another reason why i, I think that uh, having the heavy version the anti-tank version is more important because you st you're still getting some anti-infantry firepower from the squad still with the all the other shooting sergeant can take vanguard launcher for extra 10 points which is likely to be extra zero points because they have not updated the points in this particular box uh, probably the rules have been printed a while ago so most likely you're not going to pay anything for that launcher and it's uh, something you can change the super crack of frag uh, gun on your sergeant to um be heavy d6 strength 6 ap1 damage 2 blast and it can ignore line of sight so if you really want some uh no line of sight shooting which is not great nowadays with minus one to hit and minus one to the ap just reminding you again um i don't think you need to do that especially when your other option is just having that good anti-tank shot which can be the difference between finishing off a tank or a knight or not finishing off and then being attacked in return so i would not bother with this extra upgrade on the sergeant even though you get plus one to hit uh even when you are using the vanguard launcher so you will be hitting on threes if you move or twos if you're stationary uh from that vanguard launcher that's good but still not better than a, just a good crack shot now the tactics in my opinion they make hell blasters obsolete because even though you would pay 50 points less for hell blasters if the price stays the same for these guys because they may be cheaper uh, once the arxophone and update kicks in for them as well we don't know that yet it's just my prediction that uh, the vanguard launcher will definitely be free and maybe maybe they will be slightly cheaper i don't know but in any case if their price stays the same they are 50 points cheaper for the squad of 10 which is substantial however they are much much deadlier than hell blasters because hell blasters have uh, multiple problems with them first of all they kill themselves uh when they uh, roll once which you still do sometimes i've played with hell blasters for a while with my death watch and i must say that it happens even when you have a captain nearby and happens more often than you would think and you are losing a 30 back then it was a 33 points now it's 30 points yeah very expensive model uh just for shooting just for doing something that they, it's supposed to be doing anyway and you still have your opponent to kill your model so that whole idea of plasma guns being so 
cool and so good that it, they need, we need some rule to counteract how awesome they are is very dated and it should be gone. I know that it's very fluffy and it's cool that plasma guns are overcharging and it's uh, a lore thing more than a logical thing in now in the game. But there should be another way to represent that in the game. And uh, Hellblasters really suffer from that. That's why I really like the Desolation Squad much more than the Hellblasters. Plus, the guns themselves are just better. So, D3 plus 3 damage is obviously better than damage 2, uh, which you're getting even with the heavy Hellblasters that are damage 3. You still have less range with them. I think they're 36 inches of range. So it's significantly less uh, range. And it means that you will be closer to the enemy. It means that you will be more likely to be shot back at or charged, which is important. So I don't see a reason why you would use the Hellblasters when you have these guys. And obviously, with the Desolation Squad, you also get some um, anti-infantry firepower as well, in addition to your main gun. So we can approach using these two in a very similar fashion. And the problem with such squads is that you have a lot of value in a single unit, and that unit is very easily killable. So it's very easy to lose all that value uh, from just your opponent looking at them and targeting them with anything, because primary side are actually very easy to kill when your opponent has decent guns. So our goal is simple. We need to keep them alive for as long as possible whilst dealing damage. And how we can do that, we're now going to discuss. And what helps us here is that long range of the guns, because nowadays a lot of powerful factions in 40k are mostly doing damage in that medium medium to close range, like 24 inches, 18, 30, sometimes 36, but that's pushing it, mostly in somewhere in between. And they just don't have any means to reach out and touch something that is 48 inches away. And that's what we're going to capitalize on. Like Votan, Necron, certain Space Marine builds, Thousand Suns, and a lot more. They don't have the range on their guns to actually target something that's so far. And you need to be extremely mindful about threat ranges on your opponent and always stay out of the threat range when possible. And when you can't, consider eliminating the target that can threaten your squad first because likely if your opponent even has guns that can target you they will likely be very limited in number so maybe try dealing with that part of their army first and then moving on to something else so like for example with Votan Votan are unlikely to have anything that can touch you but if something is going to be it's going to be the bikers and uh, a lot of Votan lists now have bikers and actually your d3 plus 3 damage guns aren't bad against that especially with the feel no pains and all that so you really want to deal with them first because those bikers can move and um, be within range of you potentially so deal with them first and that's in that way you protect your squad to be able to shoot next turn and turn after that potentially also use terrain to limit the angles your opponent can use to draw a line of sight to your squad so say uh, you know that they have the guns to reach you and they will do that and you have nothing to stop them at least only uh, leave the uh, obscuring terrain in such a way that you can shoot your target but still be as protected as possible limiting the amount of models that can draw a line of sight to your squad so be mindful about that usually it's difficult to do these things because you don't have the range to do that you need to move forward to be actually within range of the guns and that puts you outside of obscuring but with these guys you can actually be very smart and uh, use the terrain to your advantage pushing them to like the corner of the building and poking out of that building just slightly to be able to see your target but still be partially obscured and certainly keep all your rerolls close to these guys because these 10 shots if you're running super crack they are very valuable and you don't want to miss especially if you have the chapter master you really want him to be in command phase within six of these guys and you want the lieutenant to be here as well 
in a critical situation, you always have access to a transhuman physiology for two command points. You can do that if it's a 10 man squad. I don't recommend you to rely on that. I recommend to protect them in different ways we've just discussed. So make sure that no damage comes their way or almost no damage comes their way. And then think of transhuman, not the in the reverse fashion. And now let's discuss the chapters that have great synergies with these guys. So firstly, Iron Hands, obviously a great chapter for them because you're going to be rerolling once all game. So you don't need the captain nearby and you're going to be ignoring the penalty for moving and shooting. Plus you have the six up shrug with them. So if they are, if they get hurt, it's possible that they will survive like a damage two shot. And you also have access to the five up shrug through the reject the flash embrace the machine strategy. So they have some ways to protect themselves. You're probably going to use the five up shrug stratagem on like your Terminator brick if you're running that. But say if you're not running that, your Desolation Squad is a good target for the stratagem. Iron Father Favors is surprisingly a good uh, choice if you are running Desolation Squad because he will be granting them five up invulnerable save to protect them and also plus one to hit for the squad because usually tech marines can only buff the vehicles but Iron Father Favors is special so he can give his plus one to hit to any squad. Now Dark Angels. Azrael giving them a 4 plus invulnerable save from ranged attacks and full rerolls to hit is obviously wonderful. It's both things we really need with them, protection and firepower support. Uh, and with a 4 up invulnerable save you can expect them to survive reasonably well. Still don't risk them, uh, hide them as much as possible, but that's a very good thing to have in your back pocket and their problem is that they aren't death wings so you cannot really play them with first company or second company which i hate because these are i think two best ways to play dark angels uh but still uh, you have to make sacrifices one command point tactical appraisal is great when you need that ap4 in their missiles say you're targeting a three plus safe tank and you are only with that extra point of ap away from no save on the tank at all very useful in some cases. Now the Ultramarines. Their super doctrine is very helpful. From turn two, you will be ignoring that penalty for moving and shooting with heavy weapon. Uh, but you need to be in tactical doctrine for that. So it depends on how you build your list. Chief Librarian Tigiris is great to protect these guys with minus one to hit. But again, you should keep them safe in a different way uh, with the line of sight, obscuring terrain, all that stuff. A fallback and shoot is good for them if you screwed up with your positioning and allowed someone to come close to these guys. Uh, that's up to you. You need to make sure that doesn't happen. But if it does, you have a fail safe mechanism. And one command point, Sons of Gilman, is great to give them rerolls to hit, real ones to hit. Uh, that's great and uh, will be helpful if your captain is elsewhere. Now, my favorite Black Templar. So, five up invulnerable save and baby transhuman would keep uh, them alive longer. But but most importantly, you can use one command point devout push to essentially jump, shoot, jump them. Uh, you can make a three inch normal move at the start of the fight phase and you can move closer to the closest enemy unit or the closest objective. So <laughs> as you can imagine, you can position them in such a way that you can just move out of uh, a building, a ruin or just touch the wall so that you can see through the wall and then use one command point to move closer to the objective, literally like one tenth of an inch, uh, standing behind the wall or even more if you want to. And then next turn, you can do the same thing over and over again. It means that your squad will be essentially untouchable until someone comes and charges it, uh, which is, it can help happen, but it, uh, it's up to your other units to prevent that. Salamanders, uh, they are probably not the best chapter for them just because you don't get so many synergies with them and also they are a desolation squad so they don't have multi melters. If they had multi melters, then we would probably uh, put the Salamanders on the first place because we would be getting benefits from their super doctrine and all that. But not now as it stands at the moment, you'll just be granted the re one reroll to wound a turn, which is not bad, but not something you would write home about. And and more importantly, you have one command point crucible of battle for plus one to one. That one is is quite nice. Uh, wounding knights on threes, wounding anything that's toughness seven or lower in twos. That's great, uh, but that's pretty much everything I could have 
thought about with salamanders. Let me know if I've missed something with them and maybe other chapters as well. So that's it guys. Let me know what you think about these new desolation marines. They are interesting uh, in my opinion and can be very powerful in some cases. Uh, let me know if you're going to pick them up if you're planning to or maybe you have already done so it's very hard to do now probably but i think that we're going to see a separate box of them relatively soon and i'll see you next time